said, you can't preach after that, brother. You can't. You just can't do it. And I wanted to uh, tell you just a little bit about my family. I've been up here kind of goofing off and uh, because generally I don't prepare for anything I do. I just sort of wing it. No, I uh, just think I could have been Michael if we'd actually practice. That would be kind of fun, wouldn't it? I want to introduce you to my family, tell you a little bit of my story in just a couple of quick minutes, and then we'll jump into the Bible. Uh, that's my family right there. It's amazing. Now, if you can see that, I've got four great little kids. I mean, it's unbelievable. I've got uh, three boys and a girl, which in my view is about as good as it gets. Jack is six years old. He's every bit the boss. He's named after his maternal grandfather. He was a great man. He ran a backhoe for a living, but he was a Christian man. He's with the Lord now and a phenomenal influence, even though I never got a chance to meet him. The next one in line is, I mean, back up. The next one in line is Hudson, and he's four years old. Yeah. And he's also named after a, uh, a grandparent on the other side, on the other side of the family. And he's every bit sort of that middle child, kind of mischievous, pretty tough little guy. He's one over here on the end, and you're saying, why didn't he have his coat on? It's probably because he wouldn't put it on. And, uh, you know, when you're taking pictures, you hate to whip them. Because <laughs> you're making promises and all that stuff. No, that works. And then you put the slide over, and you can see a picture of the twins, and uh, it's Rex and Riley. Rex is the little guy in the freaking gay outfit. <laughs> Anderson from Pawnee, Oklahoma, and Rex is the guy that uh, we worked at United Parcel Service together when we were in college loading boxes, and uh, I used to work at this little church out in the country around Cushing, Oklahoma, and, and I wanted him to come to church with me, and I couldn't figure out a way, and my car broke down, so I asked him if he'd give me a lift, and so I just didn't fix my car for a few weeks, and the incredible story is this guy, uh, he was asking about being baptized, and I was just trying to explain, it really wasn't a ruse, I was like, you know, there's nothing magical about the end of the service, it's about his church, like, you can stand up in the middle so we did. <laughs> You'd have thought we were standing on the Mount of Transfiguration. And then baby Riley, the little girl I wouldn't trade for a gold monkey. Uh, she's uh, bringing up the rear. Technically, she was born before Rex, but we tell her she's a baby. And uh, she's probably tougher than any of them. She's just awesome. And uh, her middle name is Elise, and she's named after uh, Heather's grandmother, who's just an incredible lady uh, who lived up into her 90s and, and just a phenomenal story. And of course, the most important person in my life is Heather, and she's right here, and she gets embarrassed because I'm the one that like got all the talking genes, and she got the brains of the whole deal, but uh, she's an unbelievable parent. She very much is the real deal. She and I met in high school, actually, in the FFA, which is uh, not anything to do with air traffic control. They said the FAA. I don't understand that, but uh, we were in public speaking together, and we started dating when uh, we were at Oklahoma State. We dated for four years. And, uh, and she decided, why not? Let's give this idiot a shot. And so uh, we've known each other for over 20. We've been married for 13 years. And pretty much all of those have been great years. We've been in Nacogdoches since 2000. She and I both graduated from Dallas Seminary together. She's, got, she's a licensed professional counselor, so she's got a full-time like project with me. <laughs> well, that works out. You always know when they cross their legs and kind of lean back, you're in for it. <laughs> I'll figure that much out. But it's just pretty cool. That's kind of our little story there, right? There's one more. Oh, yeah, here's the big boys. <laughs> That's kind of fun. That was just a couple weeks ago. I think the preacher's kids on that mow off. It would have been funnier if the timing would have been right, wouldn't it? It's all about timing. All about the timing. Anyway, that's kind of the family there. We've had a great run. It's been pretty cool. We're very much a normal family. I grew up in a trailer house eight miles from a town with a thousand people in it. I graduated with 36 people. Both my parents were school teachers. Um, I told you, you know, I played football in high school. I know it's like a win. We had 32 consecutive district championships, and I think it was a national record at the time. We didn't really realize it was a big deal, but apparently that was a really big deal to win that many in a row. And then my senior year, we lost. And, uh, <laughs> so I was at my 20th reunion, and I didn't go to it, but I will bet you money that somebody brought that up. So if you've lived that, uh, just know that we're sort of in that boat together. It's just kind of cool that way. Another thing I was thinking about the impact of coaches as we get set to begin. This is amazing. When I was in the Army, I was an MP. I know I look like a hard charger here. Oh. But uh, that's a military policeman. That stands for like, oh, okay, go ahead. 
<laughs> anyway, you end up, there's a lot of thugs in there, and you arrest people and that sort of thing, and we'd end up getting a hold of kids. And the thing that we'd always end up trying to do, because believe it or not, sometimes the military families are not necessarily the greatest families in the world, is you would try to get a hold of that kid's coach. Because you knew if that kid played ball, you had him right where you wanted him. Because you could say, listen, if you, if you want to progress in life, then your coach is going to put the fear in you. And, and it was really an incredible thing to see that that coach really held more sway over them, even than their parents. And so that says to you that winning, losing, whatever, you have an incredible impact in the lives of some kids. It's just phenomenal. That you either are now or you will be getting those calls from the kid that you're like, he's always going to be an idiot. And someday he's going to be in Congress and he's going to call you and you're not going to remember him. And he's going to go, I remember that time you made me bear crawl 87 times. And you're going to be like, yeah, because you want to be nice. And he's going to say, that's, that's really the kind of stuff that changed my life. And so I just want to clap for you and say, that's fantastic. And you're in a great field and, and, and we need great quality coaches in there.